We're going to start just by breathing and allowing your belly to fill with air. And also, I'd just like to do a little go around of like simple movement, some way you want to express yourself. In case it wasn't obvious, this is a college thesis presentation. <laughs> I wanted to make a workshop series called Movement to be Better Men. So here we're engaging in what I call macho milling. These are head nods and greetings. And we also learn how to care for one another in this space and to be vulnerable with one another. Hampshire College was founded in 1970 as a radical alternative to mainstream higher education. There are no grades and no majors. Students guide their own coursework, culminating in a publicly presented senior project. Avatar The Last Airbender was a American anime and it was, had a huge impact on my childhood. When Hampshire first opened its doors, 2,000 students competed for 260 spots, including America's most famous documentarian, Ken Burns. Almost 50 years later, the college is nearly broke. It's shedding faculty and could afford to admit only 15 students for the next academic year, which is a problem when nearly 90% of the school's operating budget comes from tuition. How did it go off the rails? If for 50 years you graduate a steady stream of um, organic farmers, social activists, and experimental filmmakers, I mean, that doesn't generate an enormous financially sound alumni base. So that's part of it. And this is hardly to blame our alums. But these, it's a young institution, so there's that. And then, you know, demographic trends and all these things. There's a kind of utopian ideal that people are trying to achieve here. I mean, for Christ's sake, you even have a farm. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It feels like a commune yeah. in yeah. Vermont in 1975. It's a sort of utopian experiment that struggles because of funding, because, you know, generally utopias are not well funded. It has really defined Hampshire from the beginning. With a staggering $60,000 annual price tag, the market has been unfriendly to Hampshire. But they're hardly alone. 25% of America's private colleges are running deficits. In 2018, with dwindling resources and growing expenses, the college called upon Miriam Mim Nelson as its new president. She was tasked with keeping the college open. When Nelson outlined her plan to find a strategic partner to merge with or bail out Hampshire, she was met with fury by students and faculty who accused her of unilaterally deciding and corporatizing Hampshire's future. Taping, no pictures. On a campus steeped in radical politics, it was little surprise that students soon occupied Nelson's office. So what were the demands when you entered the office and decided to stay there? So the first line of demands was transparency. And representation. So, yeah, we did tell President Nelson directly the first step to any of these solutions, no matter what it was, was to tell your constituents that there was a financial crisis in the first place. And we felt ignored and often lied to, and we got them out. <laughs> and I think that's a very important story for this country right now. In April, after only nine months as president and a 75-day office occupation, Nelson resigned. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. One third of the college's 29 member board resigned with her. Is there some kind of sympathy for a woman who comes in in 2018 to a college that's not in good financial shape? I felt that way day four of the sit in. By day 35 of the sit in, I knew it was either indifference or incompetence. If the decisions that Mir Nelson wanted happened, everything that made the college the college would have no longer existed. What is the solution? Right now, it's, what, it's an independent Hampshire re-engineering itself to be contemporary to the market, right, to the, to, to the market while staying true to its mission. You're a politician right now. Stop being a politician. What's the answer? And I think that if the marketing of this school did more to like showcase student projects, yeah, it would be incredible. We also have to remember that Hampshire College was chartered not as a business institution. It was chartered to be an experiment. Miriam Nelson needed to raise $100 million to keep the school running. She says she was met with immediate skepticism. 
First week I got there, mid-July in 2018, I had a number of people come up to me and uh, say, you know, I'm glad you're here. I just want you to know uh, I'll never trust you. Um, and I had been three days on the job. Did they tell you why? Because if you're in administration, we won't trust you. I was somebody that said, we have a financial problem, we've got to do something different. And there was a very vocal group that was just, we don't have a financial problem. Um, the conspiracy theories were really weird for me to hear. Such as? Uh, that I was hired by the Chinese to come in and close the college or by Best Buy. I mean, there were a lot of weird things. That I'm sorry, by Best Buy? There were so many different things that I heard. But why? What is the? What is your connection to Best Buy? If anything? nothing, and so it, you know, it became very hostile um, and very difficult. And I realized I was a distraction. Hampshire is still facing financial disaster, which the college hopes to avert by calling on its rich and famous alums, like Ken Burns. I've just now agreed to serve as a co-chair of a development committee that is charged with raising a lot of money. And I've gone back to the Hampshire community, every single one, and said, look, my calculus is hurt times four. I picked a number that really hurt, and I'm giving four times that amount. We are going to require a few angels out there to come and help us. That's And you've got to find another war to do a documentary about. <laughs> Welcome to the 2019 Hampshire College commencement ceremony. So when someone says there's no room for a place like Hampshire, $60,000 a year, and you know you can't really make a ton of money with the degree that you're going to get, how do you sort of respond to that? I, I vehemently disagree with it, with every fiber of my being. I am the living proof, and there are thousands of other people who are the living proof of the value of a Hampshire education. Not a frivolous education in no way, shape, or form. 